Yo guys, welcome to my tier list video. We did reach 500 subscribers, so I wanted to make sure you get good value for your click. And uh, yeah, I turned on the cam as well. I don't know if I'll do this often, but I wanted to try it out at least, you know, see how it works. Um, see how I feel about it. And yeah, so the tier list. Now, I know people like to put categories on it and stuff, just so there's like a clear uh, definition of why things are in each tier, so I kind of made some up, but generally we'll just try and order them all to put them in like how good I think the sieve is, but so the way I'm going to look at it is like if you were to random, or if I was to random one of these sieves, like do a random sieve game on like a, you know, normal continency or whatever map and if this sieve was to come up, like how confident would I feel about winning the game? Um, so, yeah, because I feel like that's the only way you really can judge these, like, this is not a multiplayer game, so it's really just about how much do they help you win the games, like, versus the AIs. So, yeah. Let us start with America, they are top of the list here. So, American unique ability is military land units have plus one site, 25% uh, discount when purchasing tiles, founding a city resale sets the tile purchase costs, and tile purchases grant plus 20 production, uh, scaling with era, may purchase tiles owned by other civilizations. So, pretty interesting one. I mean, the plus one site is decent, you know, it helps your scout early on get more experience and uh, find more ruins and stuff. And it does help boat- oh, it's only land unit, so it doesn't help boats. Scrap that, um, but it's nice to have sight on boats, if you can. 25% <laughs> um, discount when purchasing tiles, and the plus 20 production, scaling with era. So this one is pretty decent, um, I believe. So you can see here, the cheapest tiles to buy cost 30, and this is pretty standard from when I tested them. That, okay, sorry, the tile actually costs 35, but it's 30 more than, than the five we already have. So 35, yeah, is normally what the cheapest tile will cost, and each time you set on, settle a new city, because normally once you start buying tiles, like, the cost of the cheapest one goes up. Um, but then when you settle a new city, it will go back down to 35. And it's kind of like an empire-wide thing, so if I had another city and I started buying tiles here, it would also put the cost of tiles in this city up. But then if I settled another city, they would come back down again. So you basically... and then you get the 20 production from that. So, you know, you can kind of buy tiles for 35, 40 gold and get 20 production. Which is not amazing given that so you're kind of getting one production for every two gold, right? But you can pretty much do that anyway. Like, uh, workers cost 80 production, but cost 150 gold. So you're actually getting slightly more than one production for every two gold there. And um, monuments and stuff, you can invest in them for 80 gold, and they cost 65, but you only get 50%. So you'd get, what, 32 production for 80 gold. So slightly less than uh, one production for every two gold there. So it's not a lot better than that, but you do get to buy your tiles quickly and like get the better tiles, which can be difficult sometimes. And um, yeah, it does scale with era, so you'll get more from it later on. And it does allow you to put production into things like uh, wonders. So if you want to go for like a Stonehenge rush, or uh, a pyramids rush or something, or any of these other wonders, it can uh, you can put gold, you know, into them by buying tiles. Whereas normally, uh, gold isn't very efficient for investing in wonders because you only get a quarter of the wonder. So you probably get like one production for every four gold um, when you invest in wonders. So it's nice, and it is an early game bonus. Um, like it's something you'll generally use early game. So that's obviously makes it better. Um, yeah, what is the other stuff? So you got the Minuteman. Uh, replaces the Musketman. 
you get it for metallurgy, so that's the same. Um, it's got 31 ranged combat strength, 23 normal, so one more than these. But you do get, yeah, you get ignore terrain cost, accuracy 1, golden age from victories. I wouldn't say this is very good. I think you get one point for every combat strength. So it's really not that significant compared to the amount of Golden Age points you get then anyway. You know, Ignore Terrain Cost is nice and so is Accuracy 1 because it means you can get up to, um, you know, Accuracy 3 and then range a lot easier because you've already got the Accuracy 1 to start with. I still don't feel like it's a great unit. I mean, the Musketman is just not a unit that I would generally use that often. Um, if you're conquering stuff you want to be using siege weapons and uh, melee units so this is really going to be more for defense and a unique unit that helps with defense is quite weird because you never actually know if you're going to get to use it you can't like plan around using it it's just like if you get attacked then it'll be nice. Um, so I don't know. I guess it's all right. You know, you do need. They can help you wipe out units, I suppose. Ignoring terrain cost is always nice, but they only have two movement anyway, so it's not like the Berber cavalry, for example, where you get ignore terrain cost on a four movement unit, so you can just get all over the place. So I'm not. I'm not hugely into it, but I guess it's not terrible. And the Smithsonian thing, so this is a unique hermitage. Um, oh wow, but it's later than the hermitage because you need scientific theory. Well, that's annoying. Hermitage is normally um, earlier than that. So normally you'd have hermitage on architecture, but you have to go up for this first. Which definitely could be annoying if you need rifling. But yeah, uh, plus 5 culture, plus 25%, plus 1 for every 4 citizens. Okay, fairly significant. Um, 50% of culture turned into tourism. Boosts culture and science of museums and broadcast towers by 5. Is that, is that 5... Science and culture for each, or actually don't know. I guess we could just fucking build it and find out. Actually, that's what this is for, isn't it? So, um, okay. So I think it is. Of both. Yeah, so okay. Fair enough. It's alright. It is pretty late though, um, and you might not even necessarily have museums and stuff. You still need to get to archaeology and then radio for the broadcast hours, so really uh, pretty, pretty late stuff on this one. Um, I feel like America is a bit of a weird sieve because I wouldn't say there's one like really good strategy with them. Like obviously this is more of a tradition thing um, with the tourism and the culture and that. But I mean I suppose you can use the production to get one that's like I said which is definitely nice for tradition. So that's kind of a reasonable strategy. I kind of like the idea of progress, um, you can get a lot of gold with progress that you can then use to buy tiles and you also will have more science so you can get to like bronze working and uh, horses and that and get all the improvements done so you can sell your stuff to buy more tiles because you're going to want as much money as possible and yeah progress has this uh, liberty one and gives you more science. And I can also understand authority um, because the, being able to buy tiles off other people is going to be super useful for authority. Uh, you can like buy a tile and then citadel from that tile or something. I guess it's nice as a tradition and progress as well. 
when you don't have to war people but they nick your tiles you can buy them back so it's got a little bit of everything do you know i wouldn't mind the idea of going like progress into authority or like progress tradition maybe but then you'll probably want artistry if you're gonna go with the great people stuff so it's a bit like all round and it's got some nice stuff at the start but i don't think there's anything there that's like wow this is really gonna win you the game so <laughs> okay i need to do the rest of these a bit quicker but i am gonna go for b having a stuff at the start is nice Maybe I'll move it around later. I don't know exactly where everything's going to end up. I feel like there's not going to be an equal amount in each thing, which I guess is fine, but I might just have to see where stuff ends up. But we'll stick it in B for now. I'm happy with that. Okay, Arabia is going to be next. So, Arabia stuff. Okay. 1001 Nights. When you complete a historic event, your capital gains plus one science and culture, and 15% towards the progress of a random great person. Uh, we literally just played as Arabia. Uh, I think I had unique components on, but probably didn't make a big difference. So, yeah, um, that is a pretty cool, pretty cool thing. I'll just go for it all first actually before we talk about it. So Camel Archer, unique, heavy skirmisher. So you need physics and get splash damage one, doesn't require horses. Again decent for defense. I'm not a big fan of the splash damage because you only have one range so you rarely actually get much splash. Uh, the not requiring horses is nice and they withdraw before melee as well. Which I guess is, is good. You don't really want them to be involved in melee that often. But yeah, again, these are best for defense. You can get roads off and move these guys in and out and get quite a few of them because they don't need horses. So it can go along with the general strategy of Arabia. And um, this is a unique market with higher yields. And you get a historic event <clears throat> um, when you complete a trade route to other sieves. So basically that's going to give you another uh, trigger of the 1001 Knights. There's quite a few way of get ways of getting these triggers. Um, like at the start it's mostly going to be uh, building wonders and getting a religion. Um, I think starting a golden age. I think... Winning a war, which is 25 or more war score with someone, that can include city-states, counts, uh, spawning great people. Yeah, the Golden Ages, religion, I think I said them all. And then the trade route one, with the, with the bazaars. You send the trade routes to other civs, and when they complete you get a historic event. So, all in all, definitely a civ uh, tailored towards tradition, and... This bonus is pretty meaningful. Um, you generally can build one of these first wonders, so you can basically get up to one culture and science straight away, and then uh, you can probably get one of the second ones. I mean, particularly Petra is real nice with the extra trade route if you're on desert to help you get more historic events from the uh, bazaars. And yeah, like if you don't settle another city, you can almost certainly get one of the tier 2 wonders as well, I would say, unless you get quite unlucky. So that can get you off to a really good start. Um, the bazaars also help you get a religion, which is always very nice, um, and they're early enough with the plus 2 faith. You know, you can build like a shrine and then one of these uh, in your cities and kind of secure yourself a religion, which you really want with this like tradition builds you definitely want to have a religion so helping you get one is nice as well as some extra yields and that and you want to be sending trade routes to other civs anyway because they'll probably be ahead if you're playing on deity so you get even more uh, science for trading with them um yeah there's some great religious uh, combos you can do with them like the one i did in recent game I actually went for a weird one which was the camps one, 
but usually like in like pretty much any game you can go for goddess of beauty a uh, couple of nice ones here ceremonial burial worked really nice for me actually with getting loads of faith with all the great people that i was spawning um you know none of the followers are amazing actually but they're all decent symbolism is really good and to the glory of god is really really good as well i was able to just keep buying great people and getting the bonus yields and more great people spawning as well so it's kind of like a feedback loop kind of thing and you could go for inspired works as well if you want to go science victory and uh, if god of if glory of god is wrong so loads of cool stuff you can do with religion and it should help you get one um and there's also quite a few wonders that give you like not only a wonder but a great person so things like uh, leaning tower of pisa you actually get two triggers from definitely has to be one of the best uh, tradition fibs um i really enjoy playing them i know it you know if you get it is a snowbally sieve so obviously if you get off to a bad start with no wonders it's a bit tricky but tradition in itself uh, at least you will be getting the uh great people just from working the specialist slots that you get from all these things so i feel like you always have an all right game um but you can have a really good game so i will put them in a uh one of the few sieves you can properly run away with the game as like and just never look back pretty fun okay next is I didn't show that. I put them in A. They are there. Next is Assyria. Okay, Assyria. So. When you conquer a city, gain either a tech, if they know any that you don't know, or a large science boost. All great works produce plus three science. Siege Tower. Um... So it depends where you put the siege tower and how big the bonus is. 40% if it's right next to a city, 20% if it's two tiles away. Medic 1 and 2, extra sight, uh, cannot attack or defend or anything. 4 movement though, and you can only have two of them. And uh, Royal Library is a unique uh, school of philosophy. So, oh, But you get it a bit earlier because you get it with writing. All libraries produce plus three science. Plus one science for every two citizens in the city, plus 20% science during golden age. Three slots for great works of writing, a free work, and a free library. But there is a population requirement, so it can be a little bit hard to get it when you actually get to writing, because you probably won't have the population. But uh, yeah, it gets you a free library and stuff. Pretty good wonder. Um, definitely what you want like so you're getting the bonuses for conquering cities so you know it's an authority sieve really and having bonus science fairly near the start is pretty nice um you wouldn't always want to go writing but i suppose like i said you won't necessarily have the pop anyway so you could come down for terracotta army before going up for writing after um the siege tower is good uh, it also it works like a great general, so it can go behind units, so it makes it a lot easier to use than, than normal medics where they have to actually occupy a square. The combat strength versus cities... The thing is, I, I'm not sure it actually applies on defense, which kind of makes a big difference. I'll tell you what, let's find out. Oh, it actually does. Okay. Yeah, it's it's alright then. It doesn't help you clear out units, which is kind of the main deal when attacking cities. Like, it's unlikely that, you know, actually doing damage to the city is, is your main concern. Like, normally you just need to wipe out the units and then you can take the city in your own time. But I suppose it's pretty relevant, and the fact that it helps on defence as well is rather nice. 
Um, yeah, I mean, this is pretty good science. All libraries plus three science. The great works that give you extra experience. You know what, I'm feeling it more now, actually. When I was the first considering it, I was thinking C. Uh, it can be a little bit difficult to actually start conquering cities, though, still. But at least you do get some help. Um, yeah. I definitely see it. Um, you know, there's temptations to go for tradition so that you can get great writers, but I don't think that's the way to go. Uh, I don't think progress really. I think you just go authority, try and conquer as quickly as you can, or at least start wearing people down. But like, um, going tradition is only going to give you one, maybe two more great writers. Uh, whereas conquering people also gives you great works of writing so that you can get to that maximum experience earlier. And yeah, the science is really good because you don't want to be behind uh, on unit techs. And authority doesn't give you much science, usually. Whereas uh, it can be like, you can sometimes be caught up on, on culture or not too far behind, but science is often a problem. So I actually quite like it. Um, I'm still going to go for B though, I think conquering cities can sometimes be difficult and I don't know if it's enough to really make it like easy and if you can't conquer cities then you're obviously losing a big amount of your bonus. I definitely wouldn't feel confident about, like super confident about playing them, I would feel like I need like a weak neighbour or something to actually feel like I can have a good game, otherwise you can easily end up waiting until renaissance or industrial before you can actually conquer people. Which is sad, and no unique unit that really helps you actually clear out armies is an issue. Okay, Austria next. Austria, I've got some feelings about Austria, you know. Plus 50% rewards from city-state quests. Arrange marriages with allied city-states using gold. While at peace with a city-state, marriages halt influence decay. One extra congress delegate and boost uh, great people generation by 15%. So all of those bonuses are for the marriages and then 50% rewards from city-state quests to help you get alliances. So you need to be allied with people for like 10 turns and then... Um, I think it costs like 500 gold, plus 100 for each one you have, I believe, unless it's been changed. Hussars are unique caressias, so metallurgy we're talking, um, ignore zone of control, and plus one movement, and 15% combat strength when attacking. A decent one, a decent one for defense. Um, is that an extra site as well? Okay. Lost with upgrade though. This is quite a nice upgrade to actually keep, you know. Uh, again, they're really for defense, but I don't mind it. Uh, how much better are they than Caressias? Well, one defense better. Or one melee combat strength better. <laughs> I don't mind it, I'm not too keen on it though. And the coffee house, plus 33% great person generating, generation in the city, plus 10% of the city's culture is converted into science. Carries over 50% of food after city growth affects stacks with aqueduct. Um, that's normal growth of stuff. I don't feel like this is that good. Plus 33%, but you'll often already have quite a high percent from the marriages. 10% of culture into science is not that much either. I'd... It, I guess it'll be good in the capital, probably, with the tradition capital, but is it actually that good I wouldn't say so I feel like this is really really good though like the whole ability so 
50% rewards from city state quests is really nice. Like you want to do city state quests anyway. Some of them give really good rewards, like the ones to scout out certain sieves, um, giving that bonus science. And you get bonus to the influence reward as well. So it helps you get the alliances that then give you the marriages that give you the extra great people and um, the extra delegate. So we've had Austria against us in our games um, recently and they've already had like fucking 10 votes by the time Congress is founded. I feel like that's plausible with them. An embassy or two and, and like five or six diplo marriages if you get some decent quests. So you can like take over Congress really early. That allows you to get through um, a couple of really good proposals such as world religion plus 50% tourism and one delegate for every uh, civ following your religion yeah and also you know sanction people you don't like and generally get through anything you need like if you need uh, scholars in residence or something like that or get world's fair when you want it international games when you want it all that kind of stuff uh, cultural heritage sites if it's good definitely nice to have control over congress um, yeah world religion is really the main one but there are some other ones in there that are good um, yeah so I like it generally and then you can get a pretty high bonus on the great people generation as well from all the marriages and it helps you keep the alliances also I feel like it's a it's a really good sieve. Um, the game we played as them was on a pretty easy patch, but it was a super early tourism win, like absolute domination. Really, uh, the one thing I would say is that ma having a religion makes uh, them a lot better, and there's no bonus faith, so you have to just rely on the bonus uh, faith from going tradition, which I'm sure that you probably will, and then. Um, you know, go Goddess of Beauty again probably and Stonehenge and stuff like that can usually get you a religion, but I guess not if you miss out on Stonehenge. But it does make a very big difference. Um, and if you, because then you obviously you can't really do world religion if you don't actually own a religion. So that is the main downside of them. I like them though. I like them quite a bit. And you can go for... Uh, either statecraft or artistry so go diplo win or tourism win if you can get the world religion um, so I, I'm going to put them in A as well I feel like they've been giving me a lot of trouble to play against and uh, we had a great game with them so I can't put them any lower than that really but it's not like insta win because like I said if you don't get religion you're a lot weaker A they go um Babylon is next. So, three great scientists when you discover writing. Great scientists are own and 50% faster than normal. Investing in gold buildings reduces their production costs by an additional 15%. Bowman, a unique comp bow. And it's 12 um, melee strength, 13 ranged, which I think is actually a big upgrade on the combo. Yeah, one uh, melee and two ranged, but you know, compared to 11, one is quite a big deal, and two is, is a big deal, obviously. Uh, you get indirect fire, which is also something that you definitely want on your, on your uh, bowman at some point. Like, normally it's a promotion you have to take, usually after range, but definitely makes them way better. Uh, I actually really like these units. I don't really like any of the other ranged units particularly, but uh, these guys are properly good. And the combo is already like a, a reasonable unit, I would say, at like a reasonable time. Like, But these are a big upgrade on it, and they're good enough that you can even, even use them offensively. Like, they don't have that much worse uh, combat strength than a, a catapult. I mean, it's the same, and uh, they don't get the bonus to cities, but if you have quite a few of them, they can wipe out units and then surround a city. You can take cities out that way, if that is your desire. 
And then Walls of Babylon, uh, plus one science, an extra scientist specialist. And scientists in the city generate plus two gold. I'm pretty sure it has a scientist specialist. It doesn't actually mention it there, but I'm pretty sure it does. And yeah, it's unique walls, so. Construction for that. So also quite early. Um, it's good stuff. Wait, what was the main bonus again? Yeah, they do get a free great scientist at writing and 50% faster than normal. And then the investment. It's good. Uh, you know, bonus science, obviously really nice. You put the writer down, it gives you like I think six or eight bonus science straight away if you work it um, and you can come down and get the walls and go mathematics for the bowman so I feel like there's a few different ways you can play it I definitely think you could make authority work and actually do stuff early if you rush mathematics with them and get a load of bowmen out they don't need strategic so you can have as many of them as you want uh, and they are real real good in combat I think Tradition makes sense as well with the uh, great person bonuses, you know, just stack up on the great people and get rationalism in the end and go for the science victory. And then I progress as well, to be honest, because the gold investment cost reduction works really well with Forbidden Palace and the extra money you get from uh, progress. I guess it kind of works with tradition as well because you do need to do some investments with tradition because your general production is quite low but uh, it doesn't really give you any extra money to actually spend so a little bit of everything um, I don't feel like any of them is spectacular again there's no help for getting a religion so that is a downside with tradition and I just feel like a science victory is not the, not a good victory right now. Uh, the tourism just got changed and made it way easier to get there, so the chances of you getting here without anyone getting influential feels quite low to me. And just in general, I'm never a huge fan of going straight for science victories because you're just going to be leaving it so late in the game that uh, you're definitely allowing anyone with uh, a good amount of votes to have some chances at getting the Diplo victory and people with good tourism will have like all of the tourism modifiers apart from telecommunications I guess to try and get a tourism victory as well so you're making the game very difficult for yourself going for a science victory uh, so I kind of prefer using science to go for other things so I might say more consistent to go for like a progress or authority or something but it obviously is a decent tactic, and uh, it is nice to have science with tradition. I'm going to stick them in B just because I don't see one clear, really good strategy, but there are bonuses to everything. Uh, am I going to try and order these? I'll probably go something like that, I think. Okay, Brazil next. Unique, we love the King Day. Carnival, plus 25% culture and minus 50% from unhappiness needs. Golden Age begins, 40% of um, Golden Age points converted into Golden Tourism and 10 turns of Carnival. Bandiarantes, uh, unique explorer that gives you gold, culture, and science whenever you reveal tiles. I think it was six per tile, and I did say in my units video this ends up being really insane. Uh, there can be like a couple of thousand tiles in the game, so you're looking at probably 20,000 of all the yields. I guess, depends if you leave tiles for you to explore then, but 20,000 is pretty significant. You get the Bandiarantes in Compass, so 
20,000, I think, is basically the entire Renaissance era. Probably will be a bit more than that because you'll have more cities that will be increasing the cost, but it's really a lot. You could get two or three of these and get yourself way through industrial. I think they're quite insane, man. Um, they get survivalism as well, which can be useful for getting bars, but probably you'd rather just explore. I feel like they are super good. Brazil would camp. Um, Can we only be built on jungle or forest? Must be adjacent to a luxury resource. So it's a little bit difficult to actually find the placement for these. You know, you're kind of relying on the luck of the draw because if your forests are not near next to the luxes, then there's nothing you can do. And you can't build them next to each other either, so it can be difficult to get quite a few of them. They only give plus one to the gold, but they have a monopoly that gives plus two culture and um, you're basically guaranteed the monopoly so um, that's what makes it actually good I can't remember if they scale and stuff so radio acoustics and physics and then the other stuff is just production is bonuses from it being a forest. So acoustics is the first time you get more culture and that's quite late. So I don't honestly think they're that great. Like, yeah, I mean you might get like plus 10 culture from it after a little bit at the start. Which definitely is good, but you're having to not work something else instead. And uh, you know, two food, one production, two gold, two culture tile isn't like spectacular. Um, you're going to be hurting for production a bit. The overall ability, I mean obviously plus 25% culture does work well with the fact that you'll have these during golden ages, so you'll, in golden ages and give an extra percent culture after, so that's pretty good. Um, And yeah, just the better, you know, the better culture in general, because you can often have We Love the King days going. The unhappiness, I suppose, is alright, but... I don't know, can you really bank on that? Because what about when they end, and suddenly you're massively unhappy? And then you won't be getting any Golden Age points as well. But uh, the Golden Age beginning bonus can be really good later on. Uh, great artists give insane Golden Age points late game. So basically if you have like a lot of Golden Age points stored up to the point where it's way more than it needs, then each time you start a new Golden Age, you actually, so like say you have 40k and then it takes 10k, you go down to 30k but I think you still get the gold and tourism from the 40k that you had built up. So you can often have that kind of situation later on where it gives you a lot of uh, culture and gold. So it it definitely makes sense with uh, the tourism victory. Like the late game tourism and the early game culture to help you get the policies that you need for a tourism victory. It's a clear way to go and the Bandirantes give you a lot of science to help you get to industrial, which you need. The early game I feel like isn't great, just because only having a bit of extra culture is not quite enough to help you with actually defending and stuff. Um, so where do I put them? To be honest, I have not tried them since I, I've realised how good the Bandirantes are, and that could make a big difference. I never had amazing games where I felt particularly good with them before, and I feel like you might have to sacrifice the early game a bit just to try and survive until late game. No help with religion, you probably don't need one. 
you probably could have a decent game without a religion. I might have to stick them in A as well, you know. I think B was what I was thinking. It's low A, high B, I think. I actually would prefer these sieves just because they give a bit more earlier on. Like the bonus from the from the quests and the bonus yields if you for historic events and the bazaars. I might have to stick them in B, just because if you have a rough early game, you ain't getting any help and uh, you could die, which is how most games are lost, isn't it? Like a uh, early game up to chivalry and then getting uh, conquered. No fun whatsoever. Ooh, time for Byzantium. So. Patriarch of Constantinople. Can always found a religion. Relieves, receives one additional belief when founding. May select beliefs present in other religions. 15% uh, reduction in faith costs. May purchase are not great people starting in classical era. Cataphract's unit. Unique Knight, uh, for combat strength extra. Minus one movement though. Plus 30% combat strength in open terrain. Cover promotion. 25% defense from uh, ranged attacks. And I think a slightly reduced penalty to attacking cities. I don't even know what's the point of this because a knight has 33%, so why even bother <laughs> giving these a uh, minus 25? But whatever. Very, very strong unit, man. Knights are already very strong at 24 combat strength and uh, 28. That's quite something. And then this, which has been renamed the Tetra Conch. Uh, unique temple... Plus one faith from every three citizens. One slot from music. A bit of extra culture and faith. Doubles pressure from trade routes. Okay, not spectacular. Like I said, these guys are super, super strong and some nice promotions to keep with you when you upgrade them. And man, I really, really like this uh, belief. Uh, having a religion makes a massive difference. But not only that, you get to choose any belief you want. Now, not all beliefs are created equal, so some of them are just generally better and you can always get the best ones. Not only that, but you get an additional one, so any combos that you know, you're sometimes not able to do because you can only have, say, one Enhancer Belief or one Founder Belief, you could do with these. Uh, there's a lot of, like, very good combos and then some downright OP ones. Uh, I definitely plan to show at least one of them off. I kind of did on a live stream, but I want to do it properly. Or, you know, maybe a different strategy, or maybe even just do a video going through religion and uh, possible belief plans but man there's definitely some different ways you can go and uh, some really good ones you get to purchase great people starting in classical era unfortunately it doesn't work with glory of god so you can't get the buy any great people and then purchase them it has to be the ones you know for things you've completed like uh, for policies you've completed so if you complete tradition you can buy your great engineers or complete authority you can buy your great generals um, and you get minus 15% cost of your great profit and all other per, uh, faith costs and you can always found a religion so you don't have to even worry about making faith early you can just get on with doing other stuff defending yourself if you need to building your monuments to get culture uh, building wonders, whatever you don't have to build shrines everywhere first which you normally kind of do have to do to get a religion which slows you down a lot so, oh man, a lot of good stuff here. I, uh, 
I'm gonna have to smash these guys up into S, I think. I'm not sure, you know, if you want to play them the best way, uh, I don't, I don't honestly know what the best way is. I probably, authority is always the most consistent way, and with the Kerfrax as well, man, and guaranteed religion, um, you can definitely do well with that. But tradition also, you know, you could play progress. You're probably not going to get the absolute most out of it because progress doesn't have quite the same potential of uh, authority or tradition. So probably tradition with some OP strats or authority with some standard, you know, authority religion stuff. Okay, we are on to Carthage. Um, Phoenician heritage, plus 125 of gold when founding cities, scaling with era, free lighthouse, some trade route stuff. I guess you get more money from trade routes. I mean, I don't know the full logic of that. Quincareem, unique trireme, but it's earlier you get it at sailing, uh, fishing, sorry, instead of sailing, which you would normally need. Uh, receives reconnaissance and heavy assault promotions for free making it a very strong attacker and allowing it to gain experience from exploration. Promotions are lost on upgrade. So, well, this one isn't though, but yeah. So XP from revealing tiles, like a scout. And this 25% uh, combat strength when attacking, 25% when attacking cities, but this is lost with upgrade. Um. For movement, I think triremes have that anyway, but yeah, you don't have to go up to sailing. You can go fishing instead, and you don't need to go up and get lighthouses. It's a bit weird because you probably want great lighthouse so you can get the extra movement, but yeah, you don't necessarily need to go for sailing. Um, definitely good, you know, 125 gold straight away. You are a couple of turns away from having a worker straight away, or you can buy your monument, or you can save up and uh, get to fishing and then buy Quinkareems. So, yes, a very good unit this definitely is. It's earlier, you can, you'll can you have the money to buy some. High combat strength and you know you can get around with them, so really good for tributing. And you can honestly kill um, pretty much any neighbor who has a coastal city. They will not be ready uh, by the time you have a couple of these. So if anyone's pissing you off early, you know, even right up until castles, uh, these guys can take out cities. They're not quite what they were. I think they used to get Vanguard, which was nuts because you got to keep that as well. And it was plus 100%. So they're not quite as good, but still really good. Uh, getting early tributes is like the best way to have a really really good start and yeah with the bonus gold the lighthouses man um oh yeah we haven't even talked about this free coffee so this is a unique east india company um but i think it's available earlier currency instead of guilds and you only need a market instead of a customs house more money from trade routes uh, more of the resource diversity stuff. Two additional trade routes. Harbours plus three production. Lighthouses plus two culture. Yeah. I mean, trade routes are really nice, aren't they? Two extra of them. More gold from them. Production and culture across your empire. This has to be an estis of... Uh, it just has to be. It's not quite as a S tier as it used to be. It probably used to be near the top when Quinn Kareem's had a Vanguard, but I think it's still going to be in there. You can, um, you could go progress. Progress going straight down for this uh, fraternity policy, so you get the extra science because you'll already have your lighthouses, so you just need to settle some cities and you'll instantly have plus three food and science in all of them. Um, 
and you can just do the tributes or still conquer like it's not a big deal if you don't have authority if you're doing naval conquering stuff anyway i feel like but authority obviously works also you know conquering cities that early probably isn't amazing but you can actually conquer good cities so normally if you want to conquer early you would have to like instantly start crushing someone so they won't even have a good city for you to conquer but you could actually if you have like a a coastal neighbor you could allow them to do all their stuff build wonders get a religion and then just go in and kill them anyway and like they probably won't be able to defend so yeah good stuff with that as well Kelps next um I played Celts fairly recently as well. Unique set of pantheons. You can neither generate nor receive foreign pressure, but you get plus three faith in all own cities following your religion. And that includes pantheons, so it helps you get the religion as well. Pictish warriors. These give 200% of your opponent's combat strength as faith. Uh, they're available at mining instead of bronze working. I think they're one combat strength more than a spearman. They get some additional bonuses, no movement cost to pillage, and bonuses including double movement in tundra, hill, and snows. Man, I really love these guys. I put them down as the best uh, ancient era unit because helping you get a religion and the fact that they're available at mining means you can get them super early, start tributing, you don't have to go for bronze working, which I hate going for, if I don't have to. Uh, you can just get the Pictishes, go up for Terracotta Army, have a great authority start. But even you could just use the Pictishes to get you some tributes to help you out with a tradition start or something. There's a lot of really nice uh, Pantheon beliefs that are available. Um, I think military is the best strat, but it's good at like, there's some good enough ones that can help you uh, with tradition. I think it might be this one then. Yeah. And then you get this for Lead Hall, which is a unique circus. Ah, oh, it still has the bonus culture instead of the bonus tourism that circuses now give. Probably an oversight, but that's a nice little bonus there. Some extra yields, and they basically synergize with all the pantheons. Like all the pantheons give some extra yield to these guys. Uh, I did the border growth one, but there's a number of other good pantheons that could work. And like I said, the Pictish Warriors are nuts as well. S tier also for these guys. I guess I'll put the religious one slightly above Carthage, just because not having a religion can make your late game a little bit worse, but you can probably conquer one, so maybe that's not perfect logic right there but you won't get the exact religion you want China is the next save so mandate of heaven creating great works or gaining cities wheel of the empress day so just a replacement wheel of the king day uh, one gold and food in all cities and the bonuses decline 50% every era so it works like you do five of the bonuses you get up to five gold food and food and then when you go into classical it will go down to two because it will go down and, and get rounded down but then you can stack some more on in classical and then plus 10 percent food and we love the empress day truco news um splash damage replacement crossbowman Siege Volleys, uh, so 25% when adjacent to or in a city, and a bit of splash damage. I don't know if this has all been fixed, it wasn't working properly, but I guess it's good for defending cities really, because uh, then you actually get to be in the city. You don't really want to be adjacent to a city attacking it with a, with a crossbowman or two canoe. Uh, I don't like these guys. Crossbowmen are not a unit that is that great anyway. Uh, they're quite below the curve in terms of what they'll be actually trying to kill. This isn't a significant bonus. 
and they don't help you offensively so it's just defense which isn't always that useful paper maker plus 10 percent gold in the city during we love the empress day plus one gold for every four citizens in the city minus one unhappiness from illiteracy yeah this is normal library stuff and plus one culture these aren't great either man like libraries already have plus two science so it's literally plus one culture and then some extra gold which is all right um this is this is actually quite good early uh you, i think you get this bonus straight away so the first city you set will have an extra food and gold which is super useful and um yeah, you, you get uh, quite a few early on, so it gets you like a pretty good start in terms of food. Food generally isn't that great, because there's not that much to do with it. Like, not that many ways of converting food into other stuff that are that good. Unless you happen to spawn in like a forest or something, you can get a load of lumber camps. Things like that. I don't think it's a good sieve. Um, I think you, you need good land. To actually make it work like it can work well if you have good land but it's not gonna give you much on its own i don't see one clear way of, of playing with them uh tradition works because the food is useful there and you get the great works giving you extra food and we love the empress day but it's not gonna give you as much as quite a few of the other tradition sieves give you later on. This is early-ish, but not that good. I don't like these guys. Um, progress and authority are kind of alright. I mean, a wide sieve kind of makes sense with getting more of these bonuses and having more of these guys to make you money. I don't see any amazing religious synergies either. So it's gonna have to be quite bad on the list it's hovering between D and F I think I'll stick it in D for now just because the early game is useful so you're in the game at least which is more than can be said for some sieves so yeah it, I don't have like a terrible feeling playing it, I've had some decent games, it's just I don't see where you really go to actually win the game. So if you've got other civs doing powerful stuff late game, I feel like you could get a bit destroyed. The We Love the Empress Day synergies, like just We Love the King Day synergies in general are not that good, uh, even if you get every single one possible with all the religious beliefs and everything, I don't think it gives you enough, in my opinion. So that's where I'm going to go with that. On to Denmark. Harold Bluetooth, Viking Fury, embarks units gain plus one movement and pay just one movement to disembark. Melee land units gain the Viking promotion and melee naval units gain the longboat promotion. So plus 25% combat strength on pillage tiles and no movement cost to pillage, plus 5 HP when healing in neutral territory. Fifteen percent combat strength when attacking or defending coastal tiles. No movement cost to pillage. Recover hit points twice as quickly while healing on coastal tiles. Pretty useful for boats and um Yeah The Viking one is alright. The boat one, you know, actually being able to heal twice as quickly makes a big difference to the bo to the boats. That can often be a problem. Yeah, and ex extra combat strength. So you usually do combat in coast. Yep, yeah, pretty nice stuff. The embarkation thing is super useful. Um, so you can embark units and then run them onto land and then keep running them through. Yeah. 
uh it works really well man like you can <clears throat> i think they'll have like four embarked movements so you can move them two tiles and then move them two tiles on into land and it also allows you to do a slightly different thing with units where you can actually use a uh, blitz units to attack cities though somebody told me you can do that anyway let's test it man I'm going to need fishing, a warrior, which is here, with this, yeah, so Normally with a unit, even if you have blitz, you won't be able to double attack a city from, from the sea. Whereas uh, with the Viking units, you actually can. Which can be pretty good. Like, uh, you can get some pesky cities where there's only one coastal tile and it makes it difficult to get in. But not only you get two attacks, but you get to then move back. Because uh, you've got the move after attacking. So you could use multiple melee units to, re to do more damage to a city. That is being pesky. Uh, other Viking stuff. The Berserker is a unique long swordsman which is available earlier. It's available at metal casting instead of um, steel. I think it has less combat strength though. Two less combat strength, three movement though. You get the Amphibious promotion, that helps with the old attacking from C strat that I was talking about, because they won't get a penalty charge. Yeah, so you just charge about with them, and uh, with the movement stuff that you get from the embarkation and the extra movement here, they can terrorise stuff. You know, it works well with the full kit, I'm not that high on them as a unit on their own, just because... They're lower combat strength than a long swordsman anyway. Ooh, do they not use no they do use iron. Um Yeah, let's talk about the runestone first. So this is a unique lighthouse. Um when you pillage a tile, thirty gold and culture in this scaling with era. Quite a significant amount when you think about it. 25% production towards land and naval melee units. Definitely what you want to be doing. I think this is normal lighthouse. Or oh, maybe that's some extra food actually. Lighthouse might be plus one and plus four there. Hell yeah. Oh, you not get supply cap though. That is unfortunate. Okay, no, you do. Cool. Um, yeah, that, this this is a really good building. Uh, going up here, helping you with the production, like the pillaging with the bonus movement you have. You can do it with scouts and stuff as well. Just go around pillaging everything. And I think I think the scouts also get the Viking promotion. No, they actually don't. So it still costs movement to pillage. But it doesn't for the for say berserkers, so it works really well with the rune stones. Um, yeah, and there's some different things you can do with them, and the the additional combat strength on naval melee units. I mentioned again in the in the units video that naval melee units are really good, so uh, having bonuses for them definitely what you want. Definitely a good uh, all-round sieve for authority stuff. The only thing I would say is that the early game is a little bit... I wouldn't say there's a clear path again because you want to go sailing to get the runestones, but you also you know, want to get Terracotta Army and um, come down for metal casting, ankle what, and writing and stuff. It's a bit... I. There's not a great tech path early on. You're, you're, gonna, you're gonna have to sacrifice something. Um, and one other thing is that 
Okay, you get the berserkers earlier. So you would build them earlier, I think, and go pillage, but you won't then have the armories um, to actually give them the bonus experience that you normally would. Which I guess is more just a greed thing. You should stop worrying about stuff like that. Like, you'll get the nice uh, golden culture early, and like you can just go around pillage everything and then come back later and do it again. <laughs> And you do get really a lot of yields, so it's a good sieve. I would just say because of the start that I don't feel like it's quite S tier. I think I'll stick it in A, somewhere around there. I'll probably come back to the order again um, later on. No help with religion also. It's kind of going to be a theme of this list to be honest. Any sieve that helps you with religion is going to be right up there. And uh, any sieve that doesn't is going to be lower down because it makes a big difference if you don't get one. Less of a difference for authority sieves though, because you can conquer one anyway. Netherlands. Why is Netherlands there in the list? Oh, Dutch, I guess. <laughs> Uh, so, plus three culture and gold for each different luxury you import or export to or from other civilizations and city-states. Scaling with era can import duplicates and they can count towards monopolies. Real nice ability to be honest, uh, very easy to get just have to do some deals, sell what you have, buy what you can buy, uh, usually it's worth just buying everything, even if, you know, it might cost you five or six gold, but that's kind of worth it for three culture, because culture is worth more than gold, and once you get medieval era, you're getting six of each, so definitely worth it from then on. Only slight annoying thing is that sometimes uh, people will trade with each other, the AIs will do their little deals behind closed doors and you can't get involved. So that's the only thing that kind of makes it worse. That seems to change patch to patch, so I can't really uh, judge them based on that because sometimes you can get the deals and sometimes uh, you can't. Like sometimes you have one turn to do it. Sea beggars though, oh man. I think this was my very, very best unit that I said. <sighs> Unreal unit, man. Corvette, right. So Corvettes come out at Navigation, Sea Beggars come at Astronomy, it's so much earlier, it's three techs earlier. Like, way, way earlier. They have insane combat strength, 42, 5 movement, I think Corvettes are what, 40 and I guess 5 as well, but yeah. Extra combat strength, 3 good promotion for two amazing ones to be honest defeated enemy naval units join your side pretty amazing uh, you get to kill units and then they have really good bait actually because they draw the enemy in to come and kill them because they you get them low HP and then you get to kill more units unfortunately they don't keep their promotions and stuff they had so you get kind of useless units that normally you end up deleting but it does help you win the wars the sea wars May heal outside friendly territory and plus 5 HP healed per turn. Healing is difficult on boats. That is a nice promotion to have. It's one you can get normally, but it's not something you normally want to go for because there's so many other promotions. And Vanguard. Plus 125% attacking cities. Damage from cities reduced by 50%. This is really good, but the absolute best thing about this is that normally... You, normally you will want to go Vanguard so you can kill cities, so you have to go through Dreadnought. Which is not that good compared to having a Blitz Vanguard boat. Oh my god, cities get absolutely wrecked, man. Um, these guys are crazy. All three of these promotions you get to keep when you upgrade as well into Ironclads, which are another really good unit. They don't need any resources to build, you can spam out all of them. You know, 
only obviously a thing if they're not coastal, but you can destroy every coastal person with some of these um, man holders, plus three food, two gold, one production, gives some bonus yields to adjacent things. How do they scale as well? You know, it doesn't even matter to be honest. Why is it? Okay. Economics plus one production, two gold. Chemistry plus one uh, culture. Ah, oh, do you know what the cool thing is as well? When you get to economics. They look cool as well. Definitely the best thing about the sieve. So it's a pretty good uh, unique improvement. I don't think you can build it on resources, which is a bit annoying, but you can just put them out everywhere. Well, I think they need fresh water or marshes and they don't destroy marshes, which is a pretty unique thing because uh, marshes get a bonus with uh, windmills and stuff. So they can actually be your best tiles and usually marsh marshes are useless. Um, yeah, so decent, but I really think like this is just such a nice bonus because it's so easy to get and so you get it so like you get it every game and golden culture helps with every strategy um and then these insane units i'm definitely going to put them in s i you know best strategy i'm actually not sure on i i would probably say just authority like the bonus culture and money is is really good with authority and uh just wait for the boats and go ham but you could Definitely go progress. I actually don't really like tradition too much, but uh, the unique ability is enough to make it work. And the boulders are quite nice. Get some high pop cities with actual good tiles to work, but probably progress and uh, authority make the most sense. I guess you can use progress to get each of those sea beggars quicker. It's going in S. I guess no help for religion. I'll stick it there. I definitely remember feeling like when I was playing Netherlands, it was like flipping 10 turns into the game and I was like, this game is over. Like, <laughs> there's no way I'm losing this game. Like, yeah. I think that was with unique components, but not, not big differences there. Just a really good sieve, in my opinion. I feel very confident with them. Egypt comes next. Um, definitely some good stuff with Egypt. Monument Builders, plus 20% production towards wonders, plus 40% in golden ages, artifacts, plus 5 science and culture, landmarks, plus 5 gold and tourism. Burial Tomb uh, basically gives you a free artifact, it's a unique caravanissary. Normal caravanissary stuff. Yeah, basically just the free artifacts. So basically plus five uh, science and culture from these guys. And um, maybe you could say a little bit more because it might help you fill up a theming bonus in um, uh, Parthenon or Notre Dame. I guess that's rare. So yeah, basically just plus five uh, culture and science from each of these. And then the war chariots. So. Doesn't require horses. Needs the wheel tech. Um, stronger than the chariot. I think it's got one extra melee combat strength. Still only five range, which isn't great. But it has this gift of the pharaoh promotion. Receive production in the city of origin when you defeat an enemy unit. So I think it was basically 150%. So uh, 1.5 times the combat strength of the unit that you kill. Oh, you can have a really nice start with these guys, man. Like, you can go straight into wheel. Start buying the war chariots. They can help you build wonders. They can help you build your settlers. 
They're not great for tributing because they don't have that high combat strength. But they give you a really nice start. And then currency uh, is not a bad um, thing to go for. Like, it kind of leads to theology and some other stuff that you will generally want. And call what is a decent wonder. But yeah, the chariots get you a really nice start, man. And that can. And then you get the bonus production building wonders as well. Royal tombs give you an extra boost for every city you have. So basically, you have like the tradition bonuses with the wonder building and the extra production from the war chariots. You won't be in danger because you'll actually have units at the start that can basically pay for themselves. You can build like wonders quicker than anybody else, get the ones that you want, which basically means you can probably get a religion because you'll have a good start. I really, really like Egypt. Um, I think you can either go for the tradition route or just straight authority and still have a great game. They can help you. With getting tributes, killing off your neighbours, all of their units and stuff, and uh, helping you build some nice wonders, such as Terracotta Army into Angkor Wat, the absolute classic way to go. Or you might even be able to go up for Great Library first, first man, to kind of guarantee that Angkor Wat uh, earlier. Uh, you know, you could even say progress is decent just because of a wide empire, but nah, I think you go traditional authority really. And then whatever you want later, I guess artistry would be the usual way uh, you get artifacts give plus two science, so pretty decent, isn't it? And hopefully you'll have some wonders and stuff built up or conquered. Um, <laughs> I'm putting them in S as well. <laughs> I like a lot of Civ, man. I mean, there are some that I like less, but... A lot of civs feel really good. <laughs> I don't really know how to put some of them lower. Yeah, I think it has to be S. It might be in the lower tier of S, but we did a one city challenge with it. Um, and it was live stream, so I wasn't properly planning the episodes, and the game still felt like not that hard. So that's how strong the civ is. Although, I would say it is the best civ to do a one city challenge with. If that's the kind of thing you're into, because you you just get you can build everything in the capital, and you can defend yourself with the chariots. Ooh, England next. England bit interesting. Unfortunately, I can't give a great account on these guys because their main stuff is based around spies, so they do get an extra movement for naval and embarked units. Foreign spies. Uh, operate 25% slower and spies are faster and operate one rank higher than usual. Now spies just got changed in a big way. Uh, instead of being able to just steal techs you get like certain choices, certain events you can get where you steal like um, different things like I think you get the choice of like, you can steal some science but not like a full tech, or steal some gold, stuff like that. So given that I haven't tried the new system and I don't know how much England will help with it, I really can't give a good account. They used to be probably up in A or S. Uh, you get this building as well which gives you an extra spy and levels up with your spies again. You get this at Chivalry. Places National Intelligence Agency, which is way later, and you get some extra yields when you do successful missions. Not significant amounts, though, honestly. That's dealing with great works as well. It's something you can't really do for a while. I mean, yeah, it's good stuff. Bit of extra defense as well, why not? And all. Castles, armories, constabularies, plus one culture. So, pretty good. Um, yeah, Ship of the Line as well, which has the indomitable promotion, uh, basically allows you to go straight into logistics. 
because indomitable promotion is this one so if you build ship of the lines then you can your first promotion can be logistics which is a big deal on the naval range for units a uh, bit of a game changer i don't think naval range units are very good but uh, with logistics they are very good so kind of turns a useless boat into a good one um Yeah, like I said, this used to be amazing because you could get text deals and you'd always be behind on deity, so you could get just loads of text deals right from the start to help you uh, stay up in tech. And uh, since you were uh, caught up in tech, it made the game pretty hard to lose, to be honest. Extra movement actually is uh, pretty good with, with uh, the ranged boats as well. When you have logistics ranged boats, having an extra movement is very useful. I don't, yeah, I can't really comment because I don't know how good the new spies are. Assuming that the new spies are relatively balanced, they're probably going to be around B, B to C. Like, you get, if they're like balanced similarly to like trade routes, it's like having an extra trade route or something, and better trade routes, they might even be down at C then. I would assume they'll be somewhere between B and C. Maybe I'll stick him in C, just because there's no, no one else there. <laughs> want it to be a bit more symmetrical. And next is Ethiopia. Haley Selassie with his Solomonic Wisdom. Complete a policy branch, adopt new beliefs, or choose your ideology. One free tech. Plus one faith from strategic resources. Okay, uh, you get the steel, still, something like that. Unique monument that gives plus two faith as well, and some extra faith during golden ages. And the Mehal Safari, which is unique fusilier, quite a lot of higher combat strength, near capital bonus. And Homeland Guardian, uh, I'm not a fan of these guys. They are not my jam. You know, it's getting towards the point in the game where infantry are less useful. Like, late game is more about tanks and stuff. Um, and Homeland Guardian, fighting in your territory with infantry is not really something you do. You either use them to tank for your siege weapons in enemy territory. If you're defending yours, you use a ranged cab or just ranged units. I don't know, yeah. I mean, I guess they're spammable and stuff, the capital bonus, but they're so late and, I, and I, yeah, I'm, I'm not a big fan of them. However, this is really, really good. Literally any Civ would love to have this because, you know, the first choice you normally make in a game is Am I going to build my monument or shrine? Why not both? Just build one of these. And then you can build your shrine next as well. Pretty likely to get you first pantheon. Almost certain to get you a religion. You will still need to put a bit of effort into it. You might need to pick a reasonable pantheon. But yeah, and then the, the bonus text. Um... So how many of them are you going to get? Uh, you get one for your Pantheon, one for founding your religion, one for enhancing, one for reforming, you know, finishing your policy tree as well. So we're up on six. You know, I guess probably won't have enhanced or reformed for a little bit. It's enough to keep you probably caught up or close behind on text because you obviously normally will be behind from the start it's not going to give you money text later on which is probably when free texts are more useful but yeah you can get free religion and uh, I feel like you can get an interesting strategy if you go for God of Creation actually because 
you'll obviously build your monument straight away so plus one faith from them and then uh, you can get all these bonus yields to help you have like a really nice start and you'll have higher culture than normal because you build monuments straight away instead of shrines um, yeah and then you can you know build some wonders and do what you want with your with your quick start that could work but also gives you the option to pick some of the weirder pantheons that you might not normally get to pick I mean open sky is always great if you have some bonus faith to help you actually get the religion with it because it just can be a little bit low um, you can go any strategy really tradition progress or authority whatever takes your fancy whatever land you get I think you can go with you know not a great unique unit or any combat bonuses so not as good as most other civs for authority but still doable I'm sure with a religion that you get to choose do you know what I might be a little bit harsh here and put them in high B rather than A even though basically any other religious civ has gone in S or at least A I just think I'm not sure I really see what the plan is to actually win the game like you will get a nice start but what are you going to do with it? Uh, I don't see any particularly amazing strategy, so you'll have to figure something out in the game based on what you have. Um, but nothing that's particularly going to help you get to any victory. But yeah, the, the fact that you get a nice start means it definitely has to be at least B. Ooh, France. France, 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 France. Napoleon with his esprit de corps. <laughs> I did a GCSE French, but barely. Um, plus 10% combat strength from each subsequent attack against a single unit during a turn. When you conquer a city, you gain great writer, artist, musician points in the capital and a temporary boost to production and culture in all cities. Musketeers, a unique tercio available at gunpowder. Quite a lot stronger actually, 30 is a significant difference. And lightning warfare plus one movement plus 15% combat strength when attacking. And ignore zone of control, which is quite nice with the whole Attacking the same unit, I suppose, helps you get in and out. Do you actually get it twice? I don't know. I assume not. Uh, okay, but a big combat strength increase because 25 is the usual. And a decent promotion, so not a bad unit. Chateaus, uh, plus two culture, gold, and food, and how do they scale? That is the question we want to know the answer to here. Might actually make a big difference. The money man. I don't know if it's going to be weird because it's not in a border. So, I mean, that obviously seems like a pretty good yield at this point, but only plus one culture from printing press, and then some from flight. You know, plus 50% defense, they can go next to luxuries only. I find it hard to be that excited about these. Just because having an improvement that gives food and not production feels a bit rough. Um, especially with authority, like, food is never something you need. And, you know, authority seems like the way to go with the, with the bonuses from Conquering Cities and that. And uh, a pretty decent unit. So, I'm not that excited about these guys, I have to say. Um, 
Yeah, musketeers are better than I thought because of that 30 combat strength. This, I'm not too keen on this either. Um, you know, I can imagine when you're attacking a city, obviously you get plus 10% combat strength per attack. So you might end up attacking a city quite a few times in the same turn. Attacking a unit, you're not really going to do that more than two or three times. So you'd only get one attack with the plus 10% or one with plus 10 and then another one with plus 20%. So I don't see that being significant. Great writer, artist and musician points in capital. So I'm pretty sure this works the same way as... Um, a the Japan unique ability which basically it will half fill up the bar no matter how much the writer costs an artist and musician it will half fill it up so conquer two cities you get a free writer artist and musician and to be honest I haven't played a full game with France um, but I have with Japan and the way it basically ended up being is, you know, once you get two of them, you get some extra culture from having some great works. But it really starts stacking up um, late game because you get so many great works. And then you can get three great writers quite frequently. And when you can start... Oh, no, 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 sorry. But if you keep conquering cities, then... Um, yeah. It does end up giving you some really big great writers that can get you a lot of policies later on. Um, I'm not feeling it though. This is alright. I guess kind of goes well if you have a lot of great works and that. I think this depends on how big the city that you conquered actually was. So if it's a small city you only get a couple of turns. Big city you get longer. Reasonable. I'm not really feeling it, man. Uh, I, I, the idea of being in like a tough game as France feels like you wouldn't get a lot of help. Musketeers are better than I thought, but the chateaus. I don't think they're going to help you catch up. No science or production. You need to conquer a city. What if you can't conquer a city? I mean, I don't think the musketeers are enough to get you one if you're in a bad spot. And if you can't conquer a city, you got no bonus, so... Nah, I'm sorry France. You're going in F. Maybe if I played them I would change my mind, but... Somebody has got to be in F, and uh, I think it's going to be France. Like, obviously if you start snowballing, can have an amazing game with all the great writers and artists and stuff and if people are giving you easy cities but what if they don't it's uh i don't think you can rely on that happening every game and every civ is good if you're winning isn't it so you have to kind of judge civs on whether they actually help you win in the first place and that is an interesting point to come to with germany as well so, plus three culture golden age points uh, per city state ally, plus three science and golden age points per friend. As I mentioned before, you don't get both, so if you get an ally, you don't keep the friend bonus, so you get one or the other. One additional delegate for every um, three allied city states. Now, that is pretty useless. You basically get at least an additional delegate per ally you have anyway, so... One per three doesn't make much sense, and normally you have more delegates from other sources anyway. The first bit is decent though. Um, it is a bit like France, where it doesn't actually help you get allies or friends, but benefits from them. But there normally is enough missions that you can get, I would say two or three in the early game. And even if you just get the friendship, plus three science is a really nice bonus to have. Panzers, oh man. So unique tank with an extra movement, five more combat strengths, and they're available earlier. You get them in ballistics rather than combined armed, which is only a tech earlier really. Um, 
but at least makes up for the fact that they're so late anyway slightly uh, Hansa's 10% of city's gold is added to science not significant really 5% production for each trade route your civilization has with a city state and this is a unique uh, customs house with some bonus deals as well it's okay so main synergy really is with the statecraft and you can do late game wars incredibly well with panzers tanks already are insane uh panzers are next level insane uh just get some of these guys with blitz and you'll be killing cities in no time they have armor plating two as well i think tanks normally only have armor plating one so plus 50 percent combat strength when defending on a unit that's already way above every everything else that is fighting against like they're basically unkillable uh, what the fuck is wrong with me so really good unit but obviously very late a reasonable bonus that can be effective early but isn't a guarantee and Hansa is a bit I mean, it works well with the statecraft. You want to send trade routes to city states anyway. You can get the production to help you kind of catch up if you're back. But then you can't send trade routes to the other sieves, where you would get more science from. Um, statecraft itself is not an amazing policy tree. I feel like the best way to play Germany is probably... I feel like you could pick any tree really, but probably some sort of authority statecraft thing. You can genuinely, I feel like you could conquer the entire world <laughs> just with panthers. Uh, even if you, if you just get there in a reasonable time. But you could go with whatever your land said really. Just try and get some city state allies. You've got to do city state missions with them. To be honest, when I've played Germany, I've had decent games. I might have to stick them in the F anyway. I was kind of thinking D just because I don't mind them as a sieve. I wouldn't feel bad about playing them personally. But I can't really say that they're much better than France. Are they better than the same as China? We'll put them in D for now, because that's just my personal feeling on them. But they might end up in F. So might China. We'll see how it, see how it all plays out. Alright, on to Greece. City-state influence degrees at half and recovers at twice the normal rate. Each city-state alliance boosts the combat strength of owned and allied units by 5% up to 25% total. City-state territory treats owned units as friendly units. Hoplite, um, unique spearman, two extra combat strength, so quite a lot. And then promotion. Yeah, decent amount of extra combat strength there. Extra great general chance. Formation 1 is standard on Spearman. And then the Acropolis. So, I think it gives more culture than a normal amphitheatre. A bit of defence, a bit of tourism. 5 border growth and 25 culture. Scaling with Vera, that's quite a bit, you know. Basically, that's a, more than a terracotta army. More than a terracotta army. Hmm. I have to say, these bonuses are not amazing. I mean, it's an authority sib, really, with an early unit and bonuses for killing units. 
I don't know if the bonuses are good enough to warrant statecraft. I feel like you might as well just go fealty or whatever whatever next policy tree you, you want really, but I don't think I don't think you need to go statecraft. I don't think the city state bonuses are significant. You know the hoplites are good. Never a massive fan of going bronze working and you kind of have to use them at the time, otherwise you're going to end up upgrading them into pikemen, which are useless. So you have to wait for tercios. I don't like conquering cities that early. And the tech path is weird because you have to go up for drama and poetry to get Acropolis. So I'm not mad on them. I have to say, uh, like, you're going to delay this by going for any of the good wonders. Yeah, you could kind of argue tradition is reasonable and kill some units to keep your culture up. That's what I did in my game a long, long time ago. Yeah, I'm not really into them. Um, I'm not really seeing one good way of playing them, like one way that's going to get you a good start, that's going to transition you well. I think you're going to be a bit all over the place at the start and have some tough periods. And I don't think your late game is going to be that great either. No bonus science. I'm sticking them in C though because uh, the Acropolis is, is obviously good and uh, the uh, Hoplites are good as well. But I think C is quite fair for them. Attila of the Huns. Scourge of God. Less war weariness. Mounted melee and army units capture defeated units. So we spoke about with this with the sea beggars, but um, good way of you know you create a unit that can then be used as a buffer. I think it increases your war weariness though because you end up losing a lot of units. So it does have a slight downside. Kind of a slight positive with these, with the fact that it's with doing it on land units is there's a lot of unique land units so you might actually be able to steal some decent units using these guys um, the horse archer fast range unit used for hit and run attacks only the huns may build it horse archers are weird man I mean their combat strength is 13 13 melee and 11 range but they're a ranged unit so your attack damage is only 11. I think 11 is what skirmishes have anyway. 12, 10, so... Yeah, skirmishes are weird as well. One range, you get the accuracy... Which is alright, because you normally want to go up for accuracy 3 into... Parthian tactics on these guys, so you can get extra movement and... Don't need zone of control. Alright. You know, even though they don't use horses, you're going to have to upgrade them, aren't you? So you're going to need a lot of horses, because you're going to want a lot of uh, melee mounted units, really, to be capturing other units. And this is really like an authority sieve, but as I always mention, horse archers are not amazing for attacking. So you kind of have to rely on the melee mounted units. It's not ideal, it's not ideal, even though they are good. I actually really like the Ekis, to be honest. Um, you get them at trade, which is rather early, though not necessarily the tech you want early. And you get to build them adjacent to each other and get adjacency bonuses. It can be annoying because they're not allowed on fresh water, so, or on resources, so sometimes you're not allowed to build them where you want them, but you can chop down jungle and stuff like that. To build them. Chivalry they get an extra food and production as well. And yeah, well I think they get plus one production for every two adjacent. You can get that adjacency bonus. Oh, do they have to be on grassland or plains? Yeah, so no desert or tundra or anything. You can build them adjacent to your territory as well to help with the bonuses. I like it though, it gives all yields, uh, it's definitely an improvement you'd want to work. 
The bonus is good. It's an authority sib though, not more to say about it than that. I think low A, low A, high B, I'm thinking. Somewhere between A and B. It's not like 100% ideal. Their, their stuff is actually better for defending in a way, like capturing the units on defense and the horse archers are real nice for defense. I had a rough game with them, but that was because I had a flipping song high next to me and those are rivers about. And didn't get horses too. But the horse archers did save me because they don't need horses. So yeah, you kind of need horses. I don't think it's as good as some of the other sims to be honest. Maybe it will get demoted to B, we'll see how many end up in A and B. In comes next. Um, okay. Unix ignore terrain costs when on hills and may cost mountains. So I think it only costs them one movement point on mountains and hills. Cities, roads and railroads may be built on mountains and they give an extra an extra one science, gold and food. So the way this works, basically you settle your cities on the, on the mountains. It's not, it's unlikely you'll work them because until you, like in medieval you get plus two, like are you going to work as hard with plus one food, science and gold with nothing else because you can't put improvements on it. Are you going to work a tile with two in medieval era? Probably not. Three in renaissance. I don't know if you ever really work these. Maybe do late game. Um, but for a while you probably don't. But you put your cities on them because cities on a mountain, they naturally get what a hill would get, which is plus two food and production. But then you also get the plus one food, science and gold. So you end up with a free food, two production, one gold, one science tile. Which is amazing, you don't even need to work it, it's just like that. And then uh, you can work what you want other than that. Slingers, um, good chance to withdraw and can daze enemy units. This is a unique archer. I think it has one extra ranged attack, yeah. So 4 7 instead of 4 6. Withdraw from melee, 80%. Hard to rely on it though, because you don't really want to... You know, you either... You you keep these guys out of the way, otherwise they get one shot by Cav. So it's like... The withdraw chance is nice, but you don't... It's a risk to ever actually use it. Um, concussive hits. This is pretty good. Keep it with uh, upgrade. Pretty much what you want from your archer units actually, supporting fire and the fact that they can move through mountains means you hopefully don't need to use the withdraw, you just stick them in the mountains and they'll be fine. They got decent range strength, you know, archers are always in trouble because of this 4 combat strength that is just so low, but the range combat strength means if they're in mountains that's the only way they get attacked and 7 is, is reasonable. So a pretty good unit with the mountain walking and available straight away, you just need trapping, so very early. And get to upgrade with your archers. Terrace farm, so plus one food, plus two production, plus one food if you've got an adjacent mountain. Gives the adjacency bonuses with farms and terrace farms and that. Does it scale though? Fertilizer, civil service, plus food. No real plus um, production, which is a bit sad. Because, you know, most likely authority again with these guys. You could probably try progress. Wide empire with lots of cities on mountains. You can defend yourself with the archer as well. 
and tradition being able to defend yourself is nice for tradition and a bit of extra science and food on your cities definitely doesn't hurt so you could kind of go for any I'd imagine authority is normally the way but the terrace farm isn't great with that because it's mostly food like you know you have to build them on hills but if you had a mine a mine gives you plus one production and then plus two with the forge anyway uh, you don't get some of the other bonuses that farms get like from agribusinesses later on which I always find a bit sad so not an ideal sieve again I'm not quite sure I see one amazing strategy with them and you are relying on hills so I feel like you can have some amazing games but I'll stick them in A just because if you don't have mountains I don't think you've really got that much actually um, and if people aren't in mountains you'll struggle to conquer them with archers which are not generally the best unit but the con concussive shots is a is a nice promotion on them India How many civs have we got left? Okay. Um, starts with a pantheon. Great prophets require 35% less faith. Each follower of your primary religion increases religious pressure and growth. Cannot build missionaries. Okay, pretty nice uh, Pantheon straight away. Can be slightly suboptimal because you don't necessarily know what's around you, but you've got to pick it straight away. But obviously, absolutely guarantees you first Pantheon. Um, great Prophets require 35% less faith. Means you're guaranteed a religion as well, basically. You can even pick some funky Pantheons. You can't build missionaries. But you get religious pressure and growth from citizens it doesn't really work man you get out pressured massively because there are more cities of other people that are following their religions um, it is quite annoying it makes it very difficult to get to reformation belief uh, you got to use like great profits and stuff which kind of yeah you get them cheaper but they get kind of wasted because normally you wouldn't have had to use them you could have just used uh, missionaries and makes the prophecy enhance the belief that you might want to go for a bit worse because you won't be able to put down so many holy sites to get the bonus yields. Nagamala, mounted range unit, highly effective on flat ground. Only the Indians may build it. Wow, this is a unique Karassia, same combat strength. Feared elephant, minus 10% combat strength for nearby units, but you lose it with upgrade. As with the feared elephant on all other things. Bruh, this unit is rubbish. What? This unit sucks. Literally only feared elephant. Well, that has to be the worst unit in the game, actually. Unique unit. Oh, you get it at gunpowder. Okay. Nah, I still don't like it. And maybe it doesn't need horses. Um, I still don't like it, but it's not totally useless, I guess. Actually, I do quite like this. Replacement for the aqueducts. Um, plus 25% of production of city. Yeah, that's normal. Plus one food production from food planes. Plus two food from lakes and oases. Farms, plus one food and production and plus three food and three production just in general so this is unique aqueduct big improvement on the aqueduct and can actually make having loads of farms quite decent because at least you get a bonus production from them and food planes are insane farms on food planes man good stuff so it can work really well with uh, desert pantheon if you've got the food planes or 
uh, open sky you can just build loads of farms everywhere get the bonus uh, yields with open sky and um, yeah like the food is reasonable because at least you can just work a load of farms with bonus production on them worse comes to worse and there's so much food that you can actually do some other strats where you convert it into other things I feel like so it's reasonable choice of any pantheon and probably choice of any religion as well definitely is a big plus but the reformation belief issue makes them annoying I'm quite a fan of uh, India I think you could pick any opener again most people will go for tradition I'm not fully sold on the tradition I know you get the bonus food and stuff but the reformation belief is a problem and if you're not going to settle a lot of cities it's going to make it even harder at least if you settle a lot of cities you can inquisitor them make them all your religion to help spread your religion that way with the pressure I feel like progress can be decent you know having loads of farms high pop in a lot of cities and authority works too um, though the unit is, is bad man the unit is, is pretty bad I might say I like progress for them honestly but maybe tradition is the best way of having a better late game with them again I don't see a clear path to victory so even though you get the religion they're gonna go somewhere in B I think around there Indonesia next Indonesia it's an interesting one so you get one of three luxuries I guess we can take a look at them nutmeg plus two base yield plus some extra with production so they, have, so they don't actually hmm. There are no buildings that improve them. Monopoly is nice though, and it's like a guaranteed monopoly again, like the Brazil wood camps. Guaranteed plus six happiness nationwide. Clothes. Pepper, that's the other one. Yeah, a bit rubbish. Plus three food monopoly. I think it gives you access to the trader corporation as well. I can't remember what Brazil would give us. Um, yeah. So that's basically the only bonus, but it's a decent one. Some resources you can trade as well for some extra money. Chris Swordsman, uh, yeah, unique Swordsman. So you get this promotion, Mystic Blade. Randomly shows a new promotion after the unit completes this first combat. I think it can basically be any promotion. A lot of them are a bit questionable. And you don't necessarily know which one you're going to get when you choose your first promotion. So you don't know uh, which or which whether you need to go down Shock or, or Drill to synergize with it. So it's not too good, same combat strength. Thorsmen aren't really a unit that I often build if I can help it. I'm working not a great tech to go for. There's other stuff that is generally better, but you know, conquering cities I guess can be decent with getting resources early. Replacement garden, so you get another of these resources. Um, yeah, a bit of extra culture and faith. You need theology still, though. Building gardens are quite expensive generally. Yeah, I'm not not too keen on this. I don't think it's a great sieve, man. Um, 
It's definitely decent, you get some early game bonuses and stuff. Get a reasonable unit that you can keep with you throughout the game. Don't know if it's good enough to really get you conquests um, early, and you might find that you, you know, you won't be able to sell your iron, which is a big loss right now. We're talking on the border of uh, C and D here. We'll go bottom, bottom C for now. Alright, I'll just do a record again, because I just did it, but I didn't actually show anything. Uh, so, ignore terrain costs in forests and jungles, establish city connections, units start with woodsmen, and gain plus 20% near to natural wonders, so not going to always have that. This isn't that great, plus 10% defending in rough. The double movement is good with the fact that they already ignore terrain costs, because then you get um, actually double movement, so two movement through forests and jungles. And it goes on all units as well, so you can go on cav and stuff like that to give them insane movement. Um, the Mohawk Warrior, 33% combat strength in forests and jungle. Alright, 33% is a good amount, but not always going to be in forests or jungles, are you? Can't really guarantee that. Unique long swordsmen, same combat strength and everything, same tech. So nothing special there. Longhouse I do quite like. It's a unique uh, herbalist. It requires calendar. One production and food from all forests and jungles. Um, one production and food from pantheons so it doesn't actually give you a bonus to camps but most of your camps are in forests anyway so you get you kind of get the same as you would from a herbalist or more I guess because you'd normally only get one food for every two forest tiles and plus one from the camp plus one culture as well and plus two food I actually think it's quite good because you normally get a forest start at least, so you can have a nice early city, um, a nice few early cities. It would be amazing if renewal was usable, but it's not really. Uh, you will struggle to get a religion with that, but maybe you can even use it just to get a decent start. Um, yeah, so I think you're going to be looking at progress or authority. There's actually quite a lot of synergy with progress. Uh, you can have like a nice empire with good production everywhere to help you build all the buildings and stuff, the free connections from the woods, if you can get some of them. Uh, workers um, build lumber camps everywhere, and then you can transition into statecraft actually. That is a pretty cool strat you can do, uh, where you have high production and then you just spam out diplomats to get a load of uh, city-state allies like that. Never going to be the most powerful strat though, I would say, compared to like some of the other like great people snowballing or combat snowballing that you can have. You can go authority as well, um, depending on if you want to be doing stuff early with war, or you could take it second, I guess. I feel like the bonuses are not really consistent enough, like, you might get, you know, if you get a neighbour with that's in woods, then you're happy, but... Uh, I don't know what the chances of that really being the case are, you know. There is generally a decent amount of planes about, and people tend to chop down the woods around them as well. So I don't know that it's an amazing authority sieve, like a decent authority and progress sieve. And for that reason, I'm going to put them in D. I don't think it's quite F because I do like the long house. Um, but yeah, nothing strikes me as like a high probability of winning chance with them. Anyway, though, I 
I think I'll, what I'll do, I'll call cool this part here and I'll do a second part where we do the rest. Uh, I've probably done more than half. Yeah, I've definitely done more than half. But I might have to do some rearranging when I actually uh, finish it off. And I guess it gives you guys a chance to tell me where I've gone wrong. Um, yeah, but I should take a break at least, because <laughs> doing this is hiring. Yeah, I don't know if I need to reorder some of these before I stop this part. Um, a Babylon is actually pretty good. Because I think Babylon Authority would, would work nicely. Uh, this should probably be somewhere near the top. The thing is, I think it's good because you, you do you get the mountain bias, so you should at least have some mountains, but if you don't, then you aren't really going to have that much fun. Yeah, I think that... I am happy with that. England, I don't, I don't really know where to put them, so we'll say high C, low B, yeah, I'm good with this. Alright, hope you guys enjoyed so far, and I will see you guys for the next part.